Hi everybody, Andrew Cuneo back after a bit of a break. Today I wanted to try out Greg Orange's standard deck from Worlds. He made the top eight with it. It's a Bant control deck, which I, it was interesting to me just because I, I would have never thought to build a deck like this. So I wanted to give it a try and see what's good about it, what's bad about it. I played a decent amount with it at this point, and I think that I probably would prefer Esper to it, but it does have some advantages. I think that this deck is way better at getting kind of a an insurmountable advantage in the in the mid game against other mid range decks, and that's basically because of up the beanstalk. If you get one or two up the beanstalks in play, and then you just start cantripping um, your answers, like particularly the leyline binding or sunfall, you just get really far ahead, and, and a lot of decks can't keep up. But you pay a p pretty big cost for that setup, um, mostly in terms of the lands you're playing. Like the mana in this deck is. It fights you a lot of the games because in order to enable Leyline Binding, you're obviously going to play Four Sparrows Headquarters, but then there's these Jet Mirror Gardens and Rafine's Towers, which are essentially just comes into play tapped blue-white lands that make your Leyline Binding cheaper. And then the deck's also playing Lay Down Arms, which, when it works out, is great, but you have a lot of non-planes lands in the decks to in the deck too so sometimes your laid down arms doesn't really ever get above like two or three cmc even fairly late in the game but when it all works out it, it's very strong um another thing i liked about this deck was just syncopate i think syncopate's probably an underplayed card um it's particularly nice with up the beanstalk because as you get later on in the game you can just you know play X is four and you're going to get a card off up the beanstalk I, or you know you can pay whatever you need to counter the spell but you have the option of kind of overpaying to turn it into a cantrip same thing with march of otherworldly light uh, those are two cards that work pretty nicely with up the beanstalk so i i mentioned how i, I felt like the mana kind of fights you in this deck and that is one of the problems i think that the other thing that's going on with this deck, and it's mostly because the mana is kind of clunky, is it's not that great against aggro. You can look at the sideboard, and there's a lot of anti-aggro cards. Two Knockout Blows, and Elspeth Smite, Sunset Revelry, the Chrome Host Sea Sharks, which I kind of think are, they're kind of a split between like an anti-red and a anti-other control decks card is the way I've been playing with them. I'm not entirely sure what Greg's vision for that was. Then some negates and disdainful strokes. And then some kind of weird one of Eternal Wanderer and Hullbreaker Horror. I'm not... I mean, I'm sure Hullbreaker Horror is really great if you're literally playing a Bant Control Mirror. I think against, like, an Esper Control Mirror, they're going to have a lot of cards that can still kill it. So I'm not sure how strong it really is. And I don't really understand why you'd ever play with the Eternal Wanderer, but this is the sideboard as Greg played it, so I'm going to play some matches and maybe I'll find some spots where I actually like it. So let's give it a try. Oh, my opponent has tap lands too. It is really awkward when you're playing with Sink It Pate to be playing with this level of tap lands because it, it's just... Pretty hard to uh, get Syncopate to line up if you have to play a bunch of tap lands. I'll just take this. Syncopate something. My hopes were dashed. I'll leave up Syncopate again, and I'm going to take the hit again, and then probably use the Wandering Emperor to deal with this. The fact that the Horned Lock Whale can only hit attacking creatures is kind of awkward. It's, w it's way nicer that the Wandering Emperor, you can uh, just go after stuff, you know, in their end step if, if you're willing to let it hit you first and leave up your counters. I don't know what the opponent's got going on over there. I thought when Experimental Augury was printed that it would 
proved to be a pretty good card, but wrong, I would say. There just isn't enough stuff that really benefits from proliferating. Standard flow. Syncopate on syncopate violence. Didn't see that coming. I am a fan of the Bonkers Charm. It was always a card that I thought was be pretty good in a control deck, but before Up the Beanstalk, there really wasn't a point to putting green into your blue-white control deck. And even now, I mean, this deck, Up the Beanstalk is really, really good, but the whole deck is warped around it. And it'd be, it'd be much nicer if it was in a different color, I would say. I guess we can see here I've got six lands in play and I can still only lay down arms for uh, three. I wanted to do that before they could syncopate it for one or play make disappear. I haven't been super impressed by this guy, but it's yet another one of the cards that kind of... It works well with Up the Beanstalk, because you need to play some amount of cheap removal, but it's a cheap removal spell that later on in the game is going to draw you a card a lot of the time. Kind of at a loss as to what my opponent's got going on over there. Like, I guess some sort of a controlling Grixis deck that has a 2 mana 3 1 in it. And where it's also a mystery, what are they proliferating? Or maybe it's just like they already had four Anticipates and so they wanted more. I don't know if you're allowed to play with Anticipate in Standard right now. It's certainly not recommended. Let your blade do the talking. You cannot play line binding creature lands. Force them to have another spell or a chump blocker. Or to concede. Um, is this a Chrome Host Seed Shark matchup? It might be. Didn't see a whole lot of reason to want Sunfalls. Or lay down arms. Possible I want Elspeth Smite. I saw the 3 1 and the 2 1 land, but and I don't think I need that stuff. Maybe they have Shieldred? I don't know. It's kind of hard to say exactly what is in my opponent's deck given the cards they played. I think I'll actually board and destroy evil. I could see them having Chrome Host Seed Shark. this next turn. Mm. 
I'll wait a turn. I can just play the bonkers charm. I might have to discard the hand size. Oh, oh what's this card? Galvanic iteration. Playing, I forget the name, there's an artifact that makes your spells cheaper that you can proliferate onto. I'm trying to play that. I think I'll hold my beside you in my hand just in case that's what they're they're up to. Ow. Bonkers Charm. A little bit painful here. for this. I mean, it feels like something bad might happen to me. I think I'd rather just have me gate up. Rewarded. Spell beers in the neck. Yikes. Do something. This cannot weaken planeswalkers in any way. I'm gonna kill the seed shark and then I'm gonna kill Chandra. I'm fine with that. I take a little bit of damage as well. Being able to play one Murex is uh, certainly a cost for the way that the mana in this deck works. Gotta burn hotter. I think that, not that this is the most important way to decide on a deck, but I think if, if this man deck got paired against an Esper control deck, it, it would be at a disadvantage. Like, not having duress and not having multiple Murexes is going to be pretty rough. I. It, I guess it sounds like I'm really not that enthusiastic about Greg's deck, but like I'm playing on the ladder where Greg specifically chose this deck to play in the world's field, where the world's field wasn't super small, but it was only, I think, 120 people or so. So like, he probably had some pretty strong predictions about what kind of stuff he was going to play against and tailored his deck choice to that. Hope my opponent doesn't do anything bad to me. I mean, it seems like whatever's about to happen is gonna be good. Hopefully it's just gonna be triple big score. Or did, oh no, this already, well yeah, this doubled the Galvanic iteration. So they could, they could triple big score. Seems pretty good for them. Light up the night. Okay. That's Bell Pierce. It's 
where all my problems started. I hope they just start using their mana on Rex Restless Spires and R Rivet Tears Requisitioners. weakened this with my 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh, it's a 4-4. Four, four. I'll be happy with my 4-4. Four, four. I wish it was a 7-7. Seven, seven. This is the artifact I was talking about, that it makes sense to play with experimental augury. And it's also the reason that I've been holding this beside you in my hand for so long. When people do this, they play with, like, there's a white wrath that's an X spell. Makes the infect tokens. So they usually play it in a three-color deck. I guess they're mostly just planning to win with Chandra's hope speaking. This, can this go to people's faces? No. But also, to flash it back requires a planeswalker being in play. like to play it in a standard where this was a good card, but it's really not. Between Shieldred and Fairy Mastermind, a lot of stuff can go wrong when you're playing with it. Fairy Mastermind's also really good against stuff that being stuck. I wonder if they flash back the Galvanic iteration after the Silver Scrutiny just to show that they should have done it first. Good selection of lands, at least. Yeah. I think this is a tough matchup for this deck. I have a pretty good hand for the matchup. I think that if I was going to change this deck to make it a little bit more suitable to playing on the ladder, I would try to fit some depopulates into my sideboard. Depopulates would help in this matchup, and they would help against um, Mono Red as well. And there's probably other spots where it would help too. I'm going to 
sink if they play the flash raise the alarm resolute reinforcements I am gonna sink it painted. even though I have the sunfall I'm hoping that they play some sorcery speed stuff in the sunfall here no they have a mirror X it's gonna be hard to beat. No, that's not what I was looking for. to see if they want to send both their creatures into my board to get a card. It'll allow me to eat two more of their creatures. Looks like they're going to just cast Knight Errant of Eos, though. Perhaps not. Oh, I'm just going to hang back, get a 2-2. I guess I didn't I, I didn't mess up with how I timed the Wandering Emperor. That was always going to work, even though I could have done it before they got that that last token. I think I can't win this game. Unless I draw a Sunfall in my top two cards. So I, I'm just going to take this whole hit and, and cycle this and try to hit a Sunfall. If I just trade here, i would be going down to six, and they've got Mirex. I would die next turn anyway, even if their hand is nothing. Assuming I don't find something. But I think if I hit Sunfall here, and I'm not in good shape, but... Maybe possible to come back. Sunfall. Spar's headquarters. I could have cycled and tried to hit a leyline binding to take out the wedding announcement and go to one, but I wasn't feeling it. Hmm. Is this a good matchup for this card? Doesn't seem like it to me. Is it a good matchup for this card? Maybe this is good. A oh. little bit uncertain on that one. One of the things I don't like about not having black in this deck is normally in this matchup against like a somewhat aggressive deck that is also going to be bordering in counters, I would just cut all of my permission and board in however many duresses I had and just play like a tap out control deck. Um, and like I am... I, I guess I'm going to board out most of my counters, but I don't have that many expensive spells, but just trying to resolve like five mana wraths against somebody who's boarded in all their disdainful strokes is usually pretty miserable if you don't have duresses.
This deck also doesn't have any copies of Farewell, which I think is probably correct that Sunfall is just better than Farewell at this point. But it is really nice having Farewell against people who have Wedding Announcement. I'm sure this person also has the Cage's Welcome. Does this thing make Soldiers? No. Hmm. Maybe their deck has less Soldier Synergies than... I was expecting. It used to be the case that these blue white decks would just play essentially all soldiers. Maybe not so much anymore. Hooray! Did it. So I'm gonna have my coasts. anything pretty good in the next two turns. So if the Beanstalk is going to probably take over the game. I'm not going to Sunfall into their untapped mana. They're probably just going to flash this in, but I'd much rather bait out like Disdainful Strokes slash Protect the Negotiators on a Wandering Emperor and then get to untap and Sunfall. block the token. Don't want to block this because of Zephyr Sentinel. Don't really want to block this because I might just lay down arms it. Don't want to block there because there's no reason to trade when I can get something for free. Let's see if they have Zephyr Sentinel. We still could have Zephyr Sentinel. Show them how they haven't we used it yet. Enemies. They do have Zephyr Sentinel. Just like I always expected. So they're going to get to kill this Wandering Emperor. I have the backup, so it's not that big of a deal. Just going to let the Wandering Emperor, this one die, obviously. And then in their instep, I'll decide whether I'm going to flash in a new Wandering Emperor. Well, I guess I'm going to, regardless of what they do. The question is, how am I going to use the Wandering Emperor? Try to bait another Ze This time I think I actually want them to play the Zephyr Sentinel. They did not. Still have much to learn. This is all sort of a long setup for the fact that I'm probably eventually gonna have to sweep the board because of virtual loyalty. 
but for the time being, we can continue to force them to commit more stuff. Very mastermind. I am almost okay. sad to see you go. Strike fast and strike hard. I think I should just sunfall this turn. Save my wandering emperor. I get a card off the fairy mastermind, which is kind of annoying. Please don't. Be Ugh. Another card that kills a wandering emperor. That's pretty bad for me. Now the virtual loyalty is a problem. See you later. It makes sense not to have farewell on this deck given that I have Leyline Binding enough to be in stock. But it does make it pretty hard to beat this board. Well, certainly three Dream Raid Cascades in a row is what I wanted. like the only card that would give me any hope. Alright, I feel like I've got a bit of a fighting chance now. Can I animate the right one? That fighting chance. I may have spoken too soon. Definitely should have boarded and destroy evil. That was, a, I think, a big mistake on my part. I have got new moves to teach you. Making it if I have a 2-2 two, two token, it's not gonna do anything if I'm not willing to plus wandering emperor on it. Because that all their things are gonna be like minimum three threes. I'm gonna have the possibility of Odawaring 
one of these enchantments, maybe. But it doesn't really seem like that's going to be a very appealing choice. Please don't hit Zephyr Sentinel or Resolute Reinforcements. They whiffed! Nice. I can't believe that I think I'm actually going to win this game. I had to get so lucky. I mean, up, up the Beanstalk definitely helped a lot. I drew, what, five cards off of it this game? I guess I messed up. I should have waited to use the Wandering Emperor until I'd done all my other stuff, because I, I would have preferred to have a 2-2. Two -two. I didn't have that thing be a 6-6. Six -six. All right, get in there, destroy evil. That was a major blunder on my part. You're not looking so strong, lay down arms. I guess I have to mulligan. I'm gonna horn lock whale the token, I think. Just hope that they don't play wedding announcement. My hopes were dashed. go after the wedding announcement. No, no, I probably need to get the Takesha's welcome. Board. And I'll lay down arms this thing so I don't have the option of drawing a card. I'll leave the token around. So I, I'm gonna have to sunfall in a, in a turn or two. It didn't seem like they boarded in that many counters. They had protect the negotiators in their main deck, but I did not see any sideboard counters. It seemed like they had a lot of sideboard enchantments. Oh, I don't enjoy that. the Wandering Emperor. Hope that up the Beanstalk can keep up with the Keisha's Welcome. That's not sporting. I need that up the Beanstalk. I need it bad.
actually putting a stop to my up the beanstalk. I think that had they not just done that, it would have been almost impossible. As it stands, it's going to be really hard to win. Still. disappear. Trying to reduce the number of Dacacious welcomes in play, not increase it. I kind of need an answer to the Zephyr Sentinel. That's also a problem. I don't think that's a very good matchup for this deck. I think I'm gonna have horn block well at first. Definitely want to allow the discard to happen first. So otherwise they could just put this on top and then sense. No, I think I just gave them a free loot for no reason. But that's good too, just giving out free loots. I don't want to a Ganjo here because it's my fifth land, and if they just sack the plaza, it's pretty obnoxious for me. 
Instead, what I'm going to do is play Wandering Emperor, plus it on nothing, minus it on the Rafine. This would be so nice if it was a Plains right now. I think I'm going to have a turn where lay down arms is good soon. Assuming my goal was to get them to 26 life. to make the play, draw a card off of March of Otherworldly Light. Would have been nice to kill the Rona, but they would have just protected it with the plaza. This is what I was talking about when I said that when, when you get the multiple up to being stock draws, it, you, you do frequently get to the points where you're doing great. I guess I could still lose this game. I, I'm about to get hit for a lot. I think if I find a Sunfall in my top three or four cards, I'm going to win. Three lands in a row wasn't ideal. So I died to an untapped land. They could also... I guess they can't... Trying to loot into a land isn't going to do anything for them.
I also died to Shieldred, and I probably died to another Rafine. I think I've... They, two Rafines have gone in the yard. I don't feel like this is a matchup where I should need the sideboard very much. I think this deck is kind of... The main deck is pretty well configured for how you want to play this matchup. I might have won that last game if I had cast my Horned Lock Whale on my opponent's turn as opposed to mine. I wanted to cast it on my turn so it would be untapped and could block, but the way they had played, I probably should have been able to figure out that Urtai was a card they were likely to have in their hand. So I wound up taking three damage that I probably didn't need to. We need, we need to slow this game down so my lay, lay down arms can hold up to the point where I might do something. off the top. I somewhat dissipate over that plans. That was a close one. I think that they're very likely to activate the fairy ma mastermind here. That's wrong. This is definitely one of those games where it's like, because I didn't draw one of the triomes, just my, my hand is playing out so clunkily. It's, it's just the problem with having a mana base like this. You, your cards go from like great to awful.
Doesn't seem like this is gonna work, but... Maybe they have nothing. I don't think that this is. It is going to be well. interesting. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you. Oh, in the way where I just died to Plaza of Heroes. I was supposed to make a guy in block. No, no. It's hard to imagine that I could beat whatever spells I had in their hand, but I definitely threw away that last turn. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I, I think I got to show off some of the high points of the deck, you know, the games where you have two up the beanstalks in play. And then also some of the, the struggles with the deck, just if you don't have a hand where you, like, if you have a game where you don't start with one of these lands on the first turn, a lot of the times you're, you're managed, it's just going to be a struggle the whole game. Because it, if you don't have one of these on turn one, it usually means your leyline bindings are going to be pretty expensive. And it means your lay down arms may not be able to kill what you want when you want it to. And it also means that as the game goes on, your deck's just going to have a lot of tap lands in it. Um, so there, there are some really strong pluses and minuses to this deck. Overall, I think I'm not... I, I think I would prefer Esper Control to this deck if I had to choose a, a deck to play on the ladder to try to really succeed. I, I think that there's too many... There's too many ways for your hands to fail in this deck. But I enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.